Hey guys, wanted to put together a quick video on DM North tribute runs for Classic WoW. I had previously made some videos for uh, private servers, but the process is quite a bit different on Classic. So I'm going to try and run through that. A uh, little disclaimer to kick things off. I'm really not an expert at these runs quite yet. I've only had a chance to do maybe three or four of them. So there's quite a bit of fine tuning that can be done. I'm sure things can be sped up. Um, my goal is going to be able to play things fairly safe, so it's going to be a little bit longer, but hopefully uh, it helps you understand the process and things to keep an eye out for. So I'm going to start by dismissing my pet and then uh, resetting this instance, and we'll, we'll kick things off. It's always kind of risky with Horde outside. Uh, fortunately, I didn't die there, but that's the reason that I shift into Aspect of the Monkey before zoning out. Um, interestingly enough, this first pull is, or this first pathing can be kind of complicated. For just the sake of survivability, I would let this guard path away. It's only gonna take a few seconds and it doesn't really throw the whole runoff. If you're trying to thread the needle in the middle here, um, you can pull one guard, you can pull both. If you pull this guard on the left, even if you scatter shot him, he can still hit you. Um, it just kind of can waste a lot of time. So this makes it a little bit easier here. It gives you a little more margin for error. I'm gonna scatter shot him and you're gonna jump up. About to take a frost bolt, that's okay. And then we're just gonna hang out here and let combat drop. One thing that's gonna be really important to do these runs successfully is to have good command over your pet controls. If you don't have uh, movement abilities for your pet keybound, I highly recommend doing so. Uh, so I'm gonna call him out here. We're gonna switch him to stay. He's gonna attack these mobs and then I'm gonna send him all the way over here to the left. You can also just return him to passive, which will bring him back to his current position. Um, but I wanna try sending him over to the left, see if it buys me a little bit more time. You also need to be sure that your pet has dash. If he doesn't, um, this is not really going to be feasible. And kind of the idea here is that you want your pet to run as far away from you as possible because it will give him a chance of like despawning due to being so far away and then you don't have to res him as often. You will see I'm using Shadow Melt here. It's not really a requirement to have Shadow Melt, and you'll see this hyena sees me. Um, they can see through stealth, but I like to do that to help feign deaths cool down a little bit. As I get more familiar and comfortable doing these runs, I will probably stop pausing there and just you know try and speed things up, but if you're playing it safe, that's the way to go. And... So we had to pick up the key there for this door in front of us. All right, we're gonna res our pet. There's gonna be an Eye of Killrog that patrols. It's not a huge deal if you wait to kill him. We're not going to slow our run down on behalf of his patrol. I just want to make sure my pet has full health before I start. So again, we're setting the pet to stay. Oh, now the, now the eye's coming, so we're going to go ahead and kill it. Oh, it's uh, patrolling away, actually. So we're going to send the pet in. We're going to dash when he's close. And then we're going to return him to passive so that he goes back to his stay position. Now, one thing you'll notice there is that, and I think this is due to spell batching, it can take a little bit of time for the mobs to actually get aggro on your pet, even when he's within range. So it is pretty important that you wait for that to happen before you run in, otherwise they might target you. And you also want to call your pet back out while you're waiting on your feign death cooldown because he's going to be affected with cripple, which slows down his movement speed. Um, so here I could probably run. I am going to wait for the Eye of Killrog at this point just to be safe because we're going to have to feign death up ahead and I don't want to, um, to pull anything. So 
We're just going to hang out here. You should know that if the eye does spawn void walkers, they will not despawn. You will need to reset the instance because they can see through shadow meld. Um, it's, yeah. So you can see my pet took a cripple there. He's not running very fast. I took an immolate. That's pretty normal. Um, they can be avoidable, but, and my pet's probably gonna die here. I won't get away fast enough for him to despawn. Drop combat. Um, looks like I barely made it. So again, this is where having that improved men pet comes in handy. We're gonna get him to full HP before we move forward here. In this next room, there can be a pack of lashers on the left-hand side. Um, I haven't figured out if that's just RNG or if there's something that triggers it. If those lashers are there, you're going to want to go around them because your pet might not pull them. And I've also had issues where some of these spiders will attack me instead of my pet. So I always send him in to attack the first mob, send him in deeper to attack the second, and then I send him out. Oh, you can see the lashers were there. He happened to aggro them this time. So just takes a little bit of extra like planning. We're going to pull this eye early so that it's dead. And really important to get the feign off before he hits you or wait for him to hit you and then feign. There's kind of a, a way to throw the timing off where you burn your feign death and he is in the middle of a swing and he'll still hit you. So for this patrol, if you want to play it really safe, which we're again going to do, I'm going to wait for Slipkick to come all the way back and patrol over uh, here towards the left side, just to be safe. I have done a few runs where uh, both these Reavers and Slipkick are over there, and I've been able to get by, but it, it just feels kind of risky. So if you have Shadow Metal, this is a good place to use it. If you're a dwarf, then you know, you're kind of out of luck, and you're going to have to just kind of push through. I would use stone form for the armor boost. Also another good item to have are these whipper root tubers. I'm almost out, but they don't share a cooldown with potions and so they can save your ass. All right, we're gonna start here in aspect of the monkey and we're gonna wing clip this first guy. Scatter shot the second. Uh, wing clips missing, parrying, and we're just going to feign death right here. I should have put Cheetah on before I feigned because we want it to run up the stairs. So I'm going to shadow meld out of um, feign death, and the reason for this is that um, I'm going to most likely get into combat. I think I've, I kind of messed up here by not already being in Cheetah, and so... Um, we're just going to give this a try. All right, I got lucky. I was able to use Cheetah and the Invis Pot before the guard patrolled into me. Um, he would have killed me if I hadn't uh, done that. And you can see by going into Shadow Meld, giving my Feign Death a little bit of time to come off cooldown. I got pretty lucky here. Normally, these mobs would put you in combat. Again, with some practice, you can avoid that. I got lucky there, and... Since I started at, in Shadow Meld and gave my Feign Death a few seconds to get closer to being off cooldown, that wasn't a problem. Really important to hug this corner tight and hide in this corner. Uh, the mobs over here behind this pillar that you can't see have a good chance to aggro you, and so you want to make sure your pet is dismissed. We're going to put down a Frost Trap. Go into Monkey here. Um, these guys are going to do cleave damage for you, and you don't need the speed boost. We're going to pull the first guard into our fired urn into our frost trap and then our pet is going to tank the second one. Uh, hopefully the pet doesn't aggro those mobs on the right side. If he does we'll have to spend a little bit of time resetting here. All right cool we got lucky so we're going to pull this guy. Tab target to the second one send our pet after him. Let that trap go out. Now we can move. 
explosive. I'm going to see if I can keep my pet alive just by having him dash far away and see if it uh, is far enough distance. It is not. All right, we're out of combat. Bring our pet back. On private servers, there was an eye of Kilrog that patrolled down this hallway. That does not exist on Classic. And again, set our pet as far away as possible on stay. Use the attack. We're going to have him dash in and then put him on passive to go back to his position. I get a cripple pretty frequently here from this warlock. That's not a huge deal. Uh, looks like I resisted it. All right, only a few more pulls left before we're at the king. Uh, once this is at about 10 seconds, we can safely go. Cool, pet lived, out of, out of combat. The hyenas that patrol here, there were previously two packs on private servers. Uh, one that patrolled this outer courtyard area, and there was one that patrolled the pavilion. Here on Classic, there's only one patrol that patrols the entire area, and they move quite a bit slower. Um, you know, you may end up just having to wait to ensure you kill them before starting the king fight if you had a few issues up until this point. Pet in the back. Have him attack, and back on passive. Sometimes one of those three ogres can be a um, caster. They might hit you with a frost bolt or slow you down. That's OK. Uh, these spirits up top on the left, um, they keep you in combat. It seems to be a designed mechanic. so. You want to make sure that you um, avoid them. It's not the end of the world, but I'm right. uh, going to do something kind of risky here. I don't want those hyenas to, too far away. to do their full patrol, or this video is going to become quite a bit longer. OK, while we're waiting on these hyenas to patrol, uh, I want to talk about why it's important we killed them and a little bit about the strategy we're going to use here. Due to the length of the king fight and the patrol route of the hyenas, there's a really good chance they'll aggro you while you're fighting the king if you don't kill them ahead of time. Um, the strategy for fighting the king is basically just kind of a ping pong kiting strategy. We are going to have our pet stand up on the ledge here and Using feign death, we're going to ping pong the mobs between ourselves. We're going to mostly be in this position where I'm standing and up there. So it, it's a challenging but also fun and rewarding farming method because uh, you do have to juggle two different mobs, feign death, etc. And it's really important that you understand these pillars can be used for line of sight. Cho Rush can have three different um, class types. She can be a priest, a, a shaman, I guess, or a mage. Mage is the easiest because she only does damage spells. Uh, shaman and priest are a little bit harder. Uh, they make the fight a bit more challenging because she can either bubble the king or heal the king. It makes it a little bit longer of a fight. And so keeping Viper Sting up on Show Rush uh, really helps mitigate those issues. And you should also know that using Feign Death, you can drink crystal or you can drink your water uh, right after feign death to keep your mana pool up so you don't need to worry about spamming mana potions um we're gonna do a pet pull and when we do start the fight 
Another thing to consider is, again, if you run too far away from your pet, he will despawn. And so you have a limited range of movement during the fight. You basically can go about as far as that pillar all the way back to the other one. Otherwise, you'll outrange your pet and they'll drop aggro off of your pet and it'll ruin the fight. You'll have to feign death and start over. Uh, our main mechanism for killing the king is going to be using aimed shot. And so typically we'll stand right here between these pillars. And when the king gets around this bush area is when we'll queue up the aim shot. It should hit him right around this, uh, this part of the pillar. And our pet's gonna be over there. So it means we're hitting him and pulling aggro right before he gets to our pet. If you, if you miss, so again, you wanna be hit capped. He can start attacking your pet. He can charge your pet. It can cause a lot of different issues. And um, for Cho Rush, again, you're going to have to LOS her so that when she's casting spells, uh, she'll stop casting and start patrolling back down. Cho Rush can be hit with Concussive Shot to slow her down. And you'll probably see me do that a few times throughout the fight. Uh, great. So we have the hyenas patrolling back up. Feign death to get a trap out. These spirits again are keeping me in combat. And as soon as they start patrolling up here, we'll pull them and get them killed. There's absolutely cleaner ways to kill the the dogs here. I've had better success on some other runs, but um, don't have like a foolproof strategy in place quite yet where you always get all of them killed. You can also pull your pet out to help. I just avoided doing that in case uh, I was going to have to feign death. I didn't feel like dealing with that. Great. Now we can get prepared to pull the king. Check your gear before you pull. This is where we want our pet to hang out during the fight. And make sure he has full HP. So you do actually need to move about this far over to do the pull. If you're standing back there where your pet is, he's going to despawn due to distance. So I'm just going to set him to attack Cho. Quite a long run. Once he gets close, we're going to hit dash, and then we're going to put him back to passive. And the reason you don't want to use dash to start the fight, or at least start where he's running right now, is because by the time... He's on his way back, it will have expired, and the mobs will be able to uh, catch up to him. So we're going to dash about here. 
perfect. So I took a couple hundred damage. That should be okay. Usually wait for him to get on the ledge before I jump down. Now we're going to get in position. Um, probably won't talk as much throughout the fight. He's too far away. You want the king to come pretty close before you feign because you need time for the cooldown. So I just drink after each feign death. We're going to try and grab Cho. Not too early. If you hit her too early, she's going to attack you before you fight the king. LOS the Mind Blast. Get the Viper Sting up. And here we go. Yeah, so you can see he did manage to get a hit off on the pet. That's okay. The pet can take a couple hits. Keep concussive up just to uh, make sure the king can kite or path back pretty far. If you stand in line of sight, she will start casting on you, and then you can LOS her again. Just uh, you know, kind of all these tactics to control the movement. Use rapid fire here so if we can get a few extra shots off. It takes quite a few vipers to drain the mana, but you'll eventually get the mobs into a good enough position and she'll run out of mana so that she stops bubbling the king. I do feel like the priest or the bubble is the not hardest mechanic, it's just it makes the fight a bit longer. I need to get closer. So I kind of fucked up here. I should have been using concussive to slow her down. I should have been standing in line of sight to force her to cast, but I think we should still be okay. I'm out of range. Yeah, doing plenty fine. Fain death cooldown's almost back. You'll notice like these weird pathing issues with the king. They haven't caused any issues. He hasn't reset on me. Um, and I have noticed sometimes it's really hard to pull aggro uh, from Cho. So I'll fire up a distracting shot there. The other nice thing about the king is the lower his health gets, um, his movement starts to slow down. Uh, so if you're able to get him to like 30%, it, the fight becomes pretty easy at that point. Ah. That was a little late. He might get a swing off. No, his movement slowed down too much. That's still recharging. Yeah, you see, when she has herself bubbled, it's kind of hard to pull aggro. You have to go kind of hard. He's too far away. Since I'm low on mana, I want to let her patrol as far as possible. Give myself a little bit of time to drink. This is where having these 55 waters comes in handy. Out of range. 
You also want to be kind of careful tab targeting here. I've tab targeted the spirits before, which can throw things off. Well, it's kind of nice if you can make that happen. She just bubbled herself, which means he's not going to have a bubble this time. Helps you ensure getting your damage in. As you can see, it's okay to take one hit here or there. It's possible to bandage yourself. One note about bandaging that is important though, while they're targeting your pet, if I was to bandage right now, I would get healing aggro and they would immediately start running back towards me. So don't do that. You only want to bandage when they're running towards you. Oops, should have done that earlier. He's going to hit my pet. She's out of mana, so she's not casting. Once you get towards the end of the fight and the king's not moving quite as fast, you don't need to let him patrol as close to you. Uh, you'll never have to worry about feign death um, not cooling down fast enough. Want to see if I can force. There we go. If you can get her to cast that bubble on herself, it really saves you a lot of time and speeds the run up.
probably the last uh, thing that we need to do. He's too far away. I'm going to let him run a little further this time. I want to get as many auto shots off as possible. Easy. Okay. So that's it for the run. Um, what we're going to do here, we're going to loot the king. And the way that Dire Maul works on Classic is you don't have to talk to uh, this ogre that is running up in order to get the king buff. Uh, the, the mobs in Dire Maul will not aggro you, even if you don't talk to him. Basically, once the king is dead, the entire instance becomes safe. So this is some nice loot. The Barbarous Blade is, I think, about a seven gold vendor, seven and a half. The Crown, uh, almost two gold, depending on the price of large brilliant shards on your server. You can either disenchant it or just vendor. And this is what I'm talking about. All the mobs still look aggressive. Uh, I don't have the King's Disguise or Blessing on, and they're not attacking. So what you can do here is you can talk to Crom Crush and this basically triggers an event where the, the tribute chest now has additional items in it because the the tribute thinks that you use the ogre suit to get by if you don't talk to him there's only going to be one blue item in the chest so now i have the king's blessing it's not really needed except to get the buffs you do need it to get the buffs and now we've got our tribute chest here. Quail, water, mana po or healing potions. I've gotten uh, double mana potions before as well. That's really nice. When you get those, they they tend to be worth more. Um, eh, not great loot as far as gold per hour goes. I'll probably bender this bow since I mean I could get two greater eternals, which would be worth a little bit more. But right now I just and trying to farm gold, and so uh, I'm going to take the more safe and sure route. We'll disenchant these boots and this girdle, probably disenchant this cloak. Uh, so a couple large brilliant shards, uh, a little bit of gold from vendoring, and then the potions as well. So the only other thing that you need to know on your way out of the instance here is that nothing will aggro you except for the bugs, the scarabs on the ground. You can use your pet to just pull those out of the way. That's interesting. I haven't seen him patrol like that before. Uh, unfortunately, there's no chests that I've seen here on Classic, so that was a good source of gold on private servers where you could get some additional uh, green items to vendor or disenchant. So you'll notice these guys aggroed me. That's, uh, like I said, on the way in, it can be kind of hard to, to have your pet pull everything for whatever reason. And so having deterrence there is just kind of nice. And that's about it for the run, guys. There's a vendor on your way out. Uh, I'll keep this going just so you can see where he's at in case this is all new to you. But, you know, really if you come in here well stocked with invis potions, explosives, ammo, water, food, um, you know, I, I would actually even recommend bringing a repair bot if you're engineering just so that you don't have to leave. And with a little bit of practice, you should be able to get this down. It's better to do the run slow and get familiar with it uh, than it is to just try and breeze through. The gold per hour is definitely going to be better than Maradon, simply because Maradon has a, a limit. Just mathematically, you'll get locked out even if you speed the runs up. And, uh, you know, here, if you could get the runs down to 15, 17 minutes, it'd be a pretty solid gold farm. Could be a tiny bit lower, but uh, should still be lucrative. I'm actually just going to vendor that one. It's close to two gold, which is about the price of large brilliance. 
All right, and that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.